Hi folks, this is the Frontier Flight Museum in Dallas. It's a fairly small museum on the grounds of Luffield Airport, but if you're a fan of aviation or history, I think it's well worth your time. Here's a recently retired F-18 Hornet. It flew with the Blue Angels. And hanging on the ceiling there is a Lear fan. It's a business aircraft, single propeller and pusher configuration powered by two turboshaft engines for added reliability. There were three prototypes made. And hanging here is a replica of the 1903 Wright Flyer. The original hangs in the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum. And this is the command module for Apollo 7. Apollo 7 didn't go to the moon, but they did orbit around Earth for about 10 days. And here we have our main attraction. This is the Vought V173 Flying Pancake. By the way, if the video quality looks a little weird, it's because I was using my 360 camera. So, apologies for some of the weird stitching effects. So the first thing to understand about this aircraft is that it's a proof of concept model. It was supposed to prove the idea that a flying body aircraft could fly, and it sure did. Uh, this aircraft first flew in 1942, and it last flew in 1947, about two years after the end of World War II. It flew a total of 199 times. You may notice the glass window here at the bottom. That was to provide the pilot a view of the runway during takeoff and landing. According to Vought uh, chief test pilot Boone Guyton, the window apparently wasn't very useful. You can also see the air intake for the engines to the left and right there. You may have also noticed the large wooden propellers. Each blade is about 8 feet or 2.5 meters long. The large size of the propellers caused some problems for the designers as the high tip speed caused the wood to splinter. So Vought solved this problem by putting protective cloth on the tip of the prop blades. Also, the large propellers caused a lot of vibration. So according to the museum, Vought fixed this issue by using wobble plates. This allowed each blade to flex fore and aft in order to even out the load on each blade. The aircraft is also angled up a steep 22 degrees off the ground. This was done to provide ground clearance for the propellers and to provide a large amount of lift during takeoff. Lift is provided by the body of the aircraft. Now, as for the yellow color of this aircraft, I do believe it's period accurate from everything I've been able to read. Uh, this aircraft was restored in the 1970s, and I believe it's currently on loan from the Smithsonian. And there's a view of the cockpit there. At the back of the aircraft, you have these little winglets here. Uh, the designer of this aircraft, Charles Zimmerman, referred to these as elevators, combining the words aileron and elevator. Now these elevators are all moving. Uh, the entire elevator can deflect upwards or downwards and control roll and pitch. Now at the back of the aircraft, you may notice these little rectangular cutouts uh, to the left and right of the cockpit. That's where the two engines of this aircraft sit. They're buried in the body. And uh, here is a close-up of the engines here. You can see the exhaust sticking out of the body of the aircraft. and. Uh, we have a close-up of the cockpit as well. So as we move to the left of this aircraft, you can see the other elevator. And unfortunately for the designers of this aircraft, uh, as World War II came to an end, you saw the dawn of the jet age with aircrafts like the German ME-262, the British Gloucester Meteor, and even the American P-80 Shooting Star. And so with the coming of the jet age, Further development and investment in an aircraft like this uh, was becoming questionable, and so further development was canceled shortly after World War II. And here you can see the landing gear. The landing gear is fixed. Uh, the production model was supposed to have retractable landing gears. And down at the bottom there, you can see the engine. Uh, here's the, the air intake for the engine. Uh, that is one of the engines of this aircraft, the left engine specifically. It is a air-cooled, four-cylinder, 80-horsepower Continental engine. There's a little pull cord at the bottom of the engine with a wooden handle. The way you would start this engine is you would access the pull cord through a hatch at the bottom of the aircraft. And then you would simply pull the cord like you would start a lawnmower. And that's how you would start both engines. Now, for the pilot to enter the cockpit of this aircraft, there's a hatch at the bottom of the aircraft, just forward of the right strut, and you would use a ladder to climb up the hatch, and here's a close-up of the hatch right here. There's really no way to 
get into the cockpit without using a ladder unless you were <laughs> supremely athletic. And here's a final view of the cockpit right there. And thanks for watching, guys.